NetSparker, the developers of the only false positive free web application security scanners, enabling you to automatically identify vulnerabilities and security flaws in all of your websites, web applications, and web services. NetSparker scanners are available in two editions, NetSparker Desktop and NetSparker Cloud, the enterprise online scanning service. For more information, visit their website at netsparker.com forward slash security weekly. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. Looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring. Everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. Welcome back, everyone, to Security Weekly. Speaking of Tenable Jobs, Tenable's hiring a technical director. It's kind of a evangelist style yeah. role. No, I, I, I looked at, at this Tenable. position. This is pretty interesting. Yes. I bet we know a lot of people that could fill this position. I bet, I bet we do. Hey, you know what? I bet oh, you sorry. could fill this I have, Wait, well, didn't you? Very, used to, this, I, like, yes, this reads yes. like it used to be your old job. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. It was awesome. fun. I mean, it was nothing nothing wrong. I just needed something, something real, different. Something yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ha- yeah. That's my theory. You always need to have your next dream job. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And that was that was really fun. And that was long. and at the time that was your dream job. Now it, yeah. Now it's something now, different. Product strategist. And, actually, and no, I, re- you, I really and like what you I stop dreaming. <laughs> I really like what I what I'm doing now at Tenable. It actually is very fun. Nice. I get to play with lots of cool stuff. Yep. See, what, I, what what are you doing now, Paul? I mean, can I'm you a, talk? He masturbates uh, a lot. Product strategist. Um, so that means he masturbates a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> if only. I mean, that is ultimately my dream. Oh, job. I'm, so, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. He he engages in strategery. <laughs> meetings. <laughs> meetings. Strategery. Strategic masturbation. No, I, I do a lot of uh, evaluation of products. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, you're in. You're in a fun gig, man. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I, I was telling you, I, I spent some time with a, a tool that was written in Ruby, uh, quite extensively, this week, and it was. Uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah. I want. I, I want your job when I grow up. I'm See, a, jo- Joff, there's your next dream job. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There might be another job coming up too. I can't talk about it yet at Tenable, but there is another job coming up that um, would probably be. One that we will announce on this show. Nice. Um, that is, uh, yeah, that will be really good for a lot. Probably a lot of people who listen to the show it might mm-hmm. be. There's a, a definitely a, a handful that will be interested in this position. So. Nice, nice, and yeah. Hey, and so, yeah. so, so there's, good thing, there's good things all around, and there may be things happening in Guardians too. Dude, this industry. I mean, we talk about the past ten years. This industry is just. It's amazing to it's see insane. how it's changed and grown. Yeah. I mean, to the point now, it's just there's so much opportunity out there in this field. It's uh, it's fantastic. It, I wanted to say a word along those lines to the listeners. Um, I started out being, um, well, system administrator way long ago, but but enterprise network architecture. And uh, we often get the question of how do you break into the industry? And I, I'll give you one piece of advice, those people that are listening. Don't ever stop trying and talk to a lot of people. Go to the cons, mm-hmm. talk to the people, get to know folks. Um, I have the, the best of friends now and, and great new career opportunities just purely from the social networking perspective alone. Yep, and I, and I think now in this industry is like the best time to break in because there are so many jobs available. There is so much opportunity now. You're exactly right, Larry. It's, it's, it's been better than it has ever been, and, uh, and I think that's only going to grow. So, you know, uh, don't yeah. lose hope because I have talked to a lot of people that are in, kind of stuck in positions in, in very large organizations, and there's so much demand out there, you know. Don't be afraid to take a risk. Take a step. Yep, exactly. Uh, and that, that's, ex- that's exactly how I put it to to one of our guys, Jared, uh, when we were doing our initial round of hiring um, earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, you know, hey, I'd, I'd love to submit my resume, but I don't know if I'm good enough. And my comment to him was, bits are cheap, tempt the fates. Mm-hmm. And guess where he works now? He sent a resume in, and he was... He rocked it. I mean, nice. That's dude. fantastic. So he tempted the fates, and the fates found in his favor. And That's awesome. Bits, it, bits are incredibly cheap to send a resume. It doesn't take any time to do. Mm-hmm. And the worst that, that can someone can happen is they can say, no, you're not qualified. Right. And and, and like in Guardians, Black Hills is always <laughs> looking for very good people. Um, only we're cooler than they are, so please come our direction. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Actually, uh, uh, but we speaking, have, you know, <laughs> we have JMF Beal. Here, here at Security Weekly, we're, if you're in the Rhode Island area, we're looking for someone 
to help out uh, with the production. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're looking for a production assistant uh, to come in and uh, work all this fabulous technology that we use to pull this show off. And uh, it's, it's a foot in the door to security. I mean, it's, I, a foot I, the, it's a foot in the door into security, and it's also a foot in the door into some technology stuff that you may have never thought you'd be ever need to be involved in. Right. I, I really, here at Security Weekly, I try and recruit in security. I try and get people who are interested in security so they can come and work here. And I know they're only going to be here for so long, which is why we're always, uh, you, know, people, like, like, you know, you get asked by, like, you know, the payroll company or, you know, account, how many people do you have working? I'm like, I don't know, it, like, it changes because people come, they work here for... <coughs> Period six of time. months, six, six, eight months. Yeah, yeah, or a year, and then you know they were trying to get them a job in security. That's really how I like to structure the, the employees because we're all part time. None of us do this full time. It's right. all a part time gig and, for us. So, and, and just think, you get to be close to Paul. Who could imagine a better gig right. than that? Well, you get to see Larry once a week, which well, yeah, when I'm helps here compensate once a week. for yeah, that for that <laughs> for having to see me once a week. But yeah, we are looking for uh, a production assistant, definitely. And I mean, if you'd want to come work for us, we're potentially could have other opportunities as well. So you know, if you're looking to get your foot in the door, this is a great place to do that. And we got to put bodies in this new space that we have too. So yeah, we actually have a place for people to work next door, which is awesome. It's kind of scary. What, what yeah. a crazy idea! I got to see a little more of Larry than actually I ever thought I was going to. <laughs> oh got, come on, you've seen the full side cut out. It's great desks next door, but there's no chairs. I guess you have to work mm. here. It's like that sales job where you have to work here so long <laughs> before you get a chair. Like get now, now wait, wait, Paul, are you still in the same uh, building? Yes, uh, we just took as, over as next you- door. Yes. Oh, you did. So and it's still uh, the okay. same rules, Joff. Coffee is for closers. Okay. Okay. Got gotcha. <laughs> Sword chairs. Apparently. <laughs> I'm just checking because I need to know the rules of engagement <laughs> for a couple of weeks from now. And that reminds me, <laughs> I have a piece of art at home that would look fucking fantastic on these colored wall on this colored walls. Yeah. We need, so I will, br- I will we bring it art. next week. I'll bring it Excuse next week. me. We need some artwork. I will bring it next week as long as as well as the prop for the tenure. <laughs> Yeah, so just people know, we did expand recently. That's one of the reasons why I was not at DerbyCon. It was actually like right smack dab in, in the, the middle. middle. Yep. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to get this expansion as complete as possible before our 10-year anniversary show it's two on weeks. October 16th. It's two yeah. weeks from now. Two weeks. Do we have some awesome content? The guys did a great Gosh. job lining up content. Um, I can imagine. We're talking about doing uh, a panel. Uh, that might be pre-recorded uh, with the loft. I don't know when that will air or when that will happen. It's, we're still tying up some details, but I think it's pretty well. I think I can announce it anyway. Um, so we've got a loft panel. Oh. Um, we got Miko Hippokin scheduled. We've got two panels for that day in addition to the loft panel. And again, I don't know when this is going to air. Right. Um, it, it, it may be spread out, but <clears throat> we'll try to air as much as we can for the 10 year. We've got one on um, disclosure and bug bounties. And we've got people... Whose job it is to work in those areas uh-huh. to come on that panel with Katie us? Katie Masuras is going to be here. Katie yes. Masuras is actually one of the people Sweet. on the panel, um, and then the other panel is mobile security, um, and we're we've got a mixture of people, and we're the people we're targeting. If we can get them, it'll be epic. Um, Mike Kershaw, Josh Wright, and Simple Nomad, all on the same panel. Oh, good <laughs> fucking lord! <laughs> I mean, it almost doesn't matter what we're going to talk about on that panel. That's going to be entertaining good and lord. informative at the same time. So, as long um, as our seat, seat cushions uh, act as flotation devices and right. our seat belts are properly fastened, I think we'll be just. <laughs> we're going to do a couple of fun segments as well. I want to come up with some Star Wars trivia. So we're going to oh, that Because be the good. movie's yeah. coming out. New movie's coming December. out pretty soon. December. December. So I want to do some Star Wars trivia. And the guys are going to put... Yeah, Chris can come up with questions because he's never seen it. Any of them. Moment of Whoa, silence for Chris. You're kidding me. Wow. All right, Chris, here's your homework. <laughs> I've tried. It's supposed to, it's supposed to rain tried. this weekend. No, now he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna prolong it <laughs> for as long as possible. Now, strong is the force with you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so the other one is gonna be um, hacker trivia. So oh. the guys are gonna come up with the hacker hacker trivia and ask us mm. hacker trivia questions so we can make. Oh, just go watch. Just just go watch sneakers. That's the easy yeah. one. Who invented the stateful pack? Stateful firewall. Me. Marcus, <laughs> Marcus Random. There's. Actually, well, some like, controversy yeah. around that. Well, I, the only is. reason I remember that is because at one of the Tenable events, the one of the yes. big all hands, you were telling us the story that someone they were doing hacker trivia type thing, and Marcus was on the, the one of the finals yeah. type thing, and they asked Marcus who invented the stateful firewall. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking Marcus. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, man, I tell you, well, you know, it should be a, a, a really fun day, and I'm, I'm, 
I'm going to go find the power supply for my Junker laptop. It's just very important. Oh, yeah, we're uh, going to do the beer pouring in the laptop, too. Yes, we are. I just lo- yeah. found those laptops the other day. i got to make great. sure they're you all charged up. We can probably ready to go. set it up, uh, provided we get the electrical squared away. With it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's probably important. Get ready with the uh, portable liquids fire electric- thing, which as is John just well like those liquids and electrical don't go together. Mm-hmm. Mm. We can There's set no it up over to- there. We'll spin the cameras around. We're going to pour beer right inside laptops. No better so, way to create you know, a new studio than burn it down. That's right. That's right. It, it's going to be hard to believe this, and I know you the guys roof. are glad you're the sitting roof. down. The roof is but, on. Oh, sorry. But <laughs> while we were at DerbyCon, I was doing the CTF with the guys because we we like to hack a little bit while we're at DerbyCon. And sure enough, I dropped a beer on the <laughs> on the uh, on the table and uh, almost killed Ethan's uh, laptop. So I want. But e- Ethan was very, very quick to pick it up because he knows my past track record. <laughs> so. Joff, I'm going to bring a sippy cup from home. It's going to yeah. be your cup for the show. <laughs> make sure, I, I, make I, sure um, you have the one with the tight-fitting straw inside. It'll yes. be, be shaking it I, like a furious I monkey. Seriously, actually, I'm going to talk to my wife this weekend because <laughs> I do talk to her once in a while. Um, uh, about finding the power supply for the Junker laptop because I really do plan to bring it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the other yeah. one, uh, we can duct tape 40s to his hands. He'll be, <laughs> he'll be Edward 40 hands. <laughs> well, actually, the, the, he Junker won't be able to laptop, then. <laughs> the Junker laptop is small enough that we can probably duct tape the entire laptop to one of my hands. <laughs> um, and a 40 to the other ones. The only way you can tape is you to go. pour beer into it. <laughs> and then I'll just have like... <laughs> Like two hands completely ready to interact on the show. <laughs> nice. Did you read this blog post that I read? Uh, the inside story behind MSO8067. I saw it, but I didn't really oh. dive into it. You set aside oh. some time because once you start reading it, you you're completely I, sucked in. And you're gonna. Re- I read it yeah. from start to finish and digested every word as best of my ability. Yep. Um, it is awesome. Awesome. So, so for and for this, a and reminder, this is, though, and this is by the guy that wrote it. Wrote uh, episode though, the guy that it. was part of the team that discovered it. And I didn't, I, I didn't know this as most of the advisors, as we know, were reported by third parties. Yep. The way the story is told from Microsoft is that they found it internally. The way that they found it is fascinating. He was analyzing the, uh, well, used to be called Dr. Watson. Yep. In fact, one of the people on the team that discovered and helped analyze MSO 8067 was, they call him the father of Dr. Watson. Like he wrote Dr. Watson, right? Mm. So the way they discovered it is, you know, Microsoft sends the crash dump, says, do you want to send yep. this to Microsoft? They actually look at all that data. Um, and he started trending that data. He says, when I start seeing crash dumps that, you know, there's billions of crash dumps that they're looking at. And he was able to trend some of them, and it came up this methodology for looking at when in one of them might be an exploit. Because mm. he said it starts out really small, but the really small kind of data points are separate from everyone else's. You know, everyone else has an application that's constantly crashing. Yep. But he was able to analyze the data, and it's on the article, and pinpoint when this could be a vulnerability. That was like one of his jobs he was doing at Microsoft. And using his methods of data analysis for crash dumps came across what would become MS-08067 and said, I think I have an exploit, and looked into the crash dump. From the crash dump said, holy shit, this is an exploit. And then started the process of like what I call like reverse, reverse engineering. Mm. So he's not starting with a patch or software and reverse engineering it to find a vulnerability he has the crash dump from an exploit that he's reverse engineering to find the vulnerability, vulnerability. which is just so awesome. Yeah, like, that, so that, that, backwards thinking. It's just yeah. so, so really cool. And I, and I want to clear something up here um, that uh, here in the U.S. that reverse engineering is considered illegal because of Digital Millennium, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Um, but uh, compatibility testing and uh, compatibility right. analysis is perfectly legal. So he was not, in fact, reverse engineering. He was strictly making it compatible with Metasploit. Well, he worked for Microsoft, so well, he no, could... He was, he was making it compatible with Metasploit. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. In any case, he tells the story of, you know, he had to pull someone else from the team to help him, and they were like... Debating whether or not to take resources away from people who were fixing known vulnerabilities. Yeah. They're like, do we take resources from them and put this on this thing that could be a vulnerability? 
And then someone working on the team goes, no, I, I discovered where the vulnerability is. And mm. he's like, it's really bad. <laughs> it's like yeah. the worst yeah. possible thing that could happen. It's a wormable vulnerability. It affects all versions of Windows and it's remote. And they describe the scenario where they go into the person's office who was director of the response team. And the director of the response team could like tell by the looks on their faces that like, this is bad. And like ended his meeting. And they're like, yeah, so wormable and, and all that stuff. And they pulled all the fire alarms. And then they would, you know, had that decision to make. Do we release an out-of-band patch for this? Or do we release it on patch Tuesday when people have a little more, you know, planning time? Um, and the debate is, do we release this patch? And now everyone's going to know about this vulnerability once we release the patch. And they kind of had to weigh their, their options. And they did decide to do an out-of-band patch for 08067. <laughs> and nobody fucking applies it. <laughs> no. I mean. No. The, the thing, I didn't, 400, in the first week it was released, and this is in 08. These numbers are yeah. much yep. larger now. 400 million computers, uh, or some like ridiculous number, were actually patched. That's in his statement, and I have to give props to Microsoft for this. When you think about the scale mm -hmm. that they're patching systems, he's like, what other company out there is patching 400 million systems in a shot? Mm -mm. He's like, so we used our update mechanism, and most of the, I mean, you know, Configure didn't come out till another week or two later. But can you imagine if Configure had a billion or more machines to infect? <sighs> you know, they kind of, they cut off that, that first 400 million. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus. With their technology. Yep. And, and, you, know, and, you know, it's amazing how well the update mechanism works. I was thinking about that to, uh, last, over the weekend when I was at DerbyCon because I get an email from a piece of software that I use. Mm -hmm. There's no built-in either auto-update mechanism. You can't right. go and do, you know, help about check for updates type of thing. No. When you check <clears throat> in with their servers to send data for the population, so it's a data sharing application. Mm -hmm. When you check in for the server, it checks the version number and then emails you and says, hey, there's a new version out. Mm -hmm. You might want to consider updating. They um, go to our website, download it, and install it over the existing. The Microsoft makes mistakes sometimes. <sighs> oh hell yeah! That happened this week. They, exactly. Did you see that update that uh, happened? And it was actually a test from Microsoft. But yep. I can't fault. Yeah, I, I, I caught that one. There was a uh, people got a little panicked about that. There yeah. was a test, a test patch that was uh, that was pushed ahead, a random kind of string in it, and people were like, "Whoa, what's going on?" China. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, mistakes mistakes happen. But uh, you, you know. Um, uh, one question I have um, uh, for you guys is: uh, uh, Is do you still see MSO eight sixty seven in the wild? And yes, I know I I do, um, which which surprises me because here we are seven years later. You would think that mostly it was patched out there, but yeah. it, it, but unfortunately, it's not. Kev Kevin's shaking his head. Yes, Kevin. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's prevalent. It's it's still out there. Mm. Uh, and and it's a bad one. I mean, it's a path name canonicalization exploit. Um, I see if you can say canonicalization three times fast. <laughs> that was good, Joff. I like that. Yeah, I, I say canonical. I, I, I thought it was pretty good, and I've, I've only been drinking a little bit. Canonicalization. Um, canonicalization. 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 Yeah, that's not fast yeah, anyway. enough. Yeah, well, your tongue gets kind of tied up, but um, but it's a bad one. I mean, pa you know, pro proper path name sanitization. It's like directory traversal. It's it's required, and this one was RPC and remotely exploitable. So it's it's been a lot of fun for pen testers for seven plus years now. So, mm. yay! <laughs> um, but but not so good for organizations. So, yeah. Uh, what else we got? Really cool write up on a bad IP camera. Not only insecure, but it phoned home to China when he oh, did the analysis yeah. on it. Uh. Great write up. Um, oh, and the password was just slightly better. The default password or the backdoor password was one two three four five six. Oh God! So slightly oh, better. Right. Well, at least they put the six on there. That's I mean, great. Yeah, yeah. That, that's pretty bad. Hey, one of the ones that we uh, we promised, uh, Nest New Wireless Mesh. Yeah, protocol. I want to hear about this. So, I, I mean, they just did the announcement today. Um, and I did a little digging, and they so it was on uh, Gizmodo, uh, and they are sort of claiming that um, this whole mesh networking protocol that uh, Nest has released um, is going to revolutionize the way we do IoT mm -hmm. from a wireless perspective um, because the ability to take to use multiple radios, Wi-Fi, and all this other stuff, and they built a new protocol on top of 802.15.4, which is the basis for ZigBee. Mm -hmm. So it's using, lever you can leverage existing ZigBee radios. It's mm -hmm. just a different physical layer on top of that. Um, 
and some of the big things that they're they're stating is that it's going to use IPv6 or uh, with six low pan over mm -hmm. 802.15.4. So IPv6 over Zigbee, um, which is good. The problem is, is that those are two very well documented protocols. We know all about them. We have sniffing hardware, we have Wireshark, you name mm -hmm. it. Now it's that the next layer up is where sort of the new sexy <coughs> comes in. And the, uh, the, the, the comment, so it's the ability to do uh, mesh networking. And for me, mesh networking is a huge challenge. Mm, because, for security. Well, exactly, because you have a new node that one needs to join the mesh network. Who do I trust this node? Do, 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 I've never seen this node before. Do I trust it? Mm -hmm. The node says, I've never seen this network before. Do I trust it? Mm -hmm. Who gives permission for this new node to join this network? That none of the people have, no, none of the two devices have seen this. So who manages whether the node's allowed or not? And how do you make that exchange happen when the two devices are, the, the network and the device is anonymous? So how do you do mm -hmm. anonymous key exchange? Mm. Well, the big one is Diffie-Hellman. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and if you trust the, you know, you know, with Diffie's drug fueled, um, mathematics from the sixties, um, <coughs> he was, was he on, we interviewed him. It was him. the sixties. Come on. <laughs> Everybody was on drugs. Uh, uh, I okay, Larry. Watch that interview where he talks about doing drugs and coming up. Well, with he did. He won't, he won't say that, but we, it, we, it's a joke. It's a, no, it's, no, a, no, it's a joke. And I would never no, say we have said because we interviewed him. Yes. But we have trusted Whit Diffie's uh, code in an awful lot of stuff for an awful yes, long time. Too. Absolutely, absolutely, and we found we found issues with it. Logjam you know, was just was recent with uh, issues with Diffie Hellman. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the the anonymous authorization and key exchange for an anonymous network is is interesting, and I, I'm concerned how they're going to do that. Um, the the big question. Oh, so the I'm sure that um, they've got some really smart people that have designed the protocol. I mean, Nest is owned mm -hmm. by Google. Google employs some of the best engineers that I know. Um, so I suspect it's going to be pretty good. The problem that I have is that they uh, claim in the specification and or the, in the their marketing documentation that it's quote always secure unquote. Mm -hmm. And I read that as on behalf of the industry as challenge accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Considering we already have a significant amount of tools to start doing auditing for this traffic. What is the, the <coughs> function of the mesh network? Uh, so the ability for multiple device types to be able to communicate to each other. So the Nest, so the cameras, ne thermostats, and smoke detectors. And more than just Nest. So they're making the oh, protocol okay. available so that you can, <coughs> um, if you have a Zigbee device, you could potentially do different physical layer types on a Zigbee device by mm -hmm. flashing a firmware so you could make an, a technically an open standard so that multiple devices now can support um, what they're uh, calling, um, what did they call it? Um, I, yeah, I don't know that devices necessarily need to talk to each other, but they just need to talk to a central hub. Like I, it was, yes. I'm thinking about the, <coughs> I, you know, I have the, do you have the smart things at home? Uh, I do not. I okay. have uh, Iris. So I've got the smart things, yep. and I was looking at some of the new technology, and I replaced most of the windows in my house. And then I was watching TV a couple of weeks ago, and they, Pella is advertising mm -hmm. these new windows that have the blinds built in mm -hmm. that have uh, some type of wireless technology on mm -hmm. it. They didn't say in the commercial. And I'm like, ah. Oh. I'm like, that would be so awesome to have the shades inside of my windows connected to my... Uh, home automation system and have my Nest connected to that. So mm -hmm. my Windows, essentially, the smart things would know about the temperature and know about the blinds. Yeah. And so what a great... Exactly. So you need a, a you need you know, a hub. It's too hot in the house, so I put the blinds down. down. I'm like, oh, I'm, it, it's, yep. you know, first thing in the morning, I can have my blinds automatically open. You yeah, stand there scratching your balls in front of the window in the bedroom. <laughs> your, your, yeah. hub, your hub needs to be some sort of uh, PKI, like a management hub that, you know, it's, it's going to... authenticate to, the devices. Yep. Right? Yeah, exactly. that's going to authenticate the devices. So you, there's, uh, uh, and the thought is that you can have, a, you know, for example, a Nest uh, hub that supports the Nest devices, which can communicate Wi-Fi to another hub for, say, SmartThings or Iris, as long as they can you know, have a common yeah, path. Yeah, uh, so the Philips Hue and yep. the SmartThings. Uh, I have the Philips Hue hub, which talks to the SmartThings. Yep. So, so I can control my Philips Hue stuff from, because that's important. Yep. So, so, I don't know how you guys live without this technology. I, yeah, I, I was going to say, this all sounds incredibly complicated to open my blinds. 
Yes, yeah. it does. It does. So I have it hooked up to my garage door. <laughs> so <laughs> as as of right awesome. now, um, in order to start down this road to support Nest new protocol called Weave, um, you need a uh, a Nest product, but you can get the Nest Protect. Which is the uh, CO2, CO2 detector and smoke detector yep. for $100. And that will give you the functionality to start supporting Weave. Oh, really? Do you need one of the new? Because I, I have one. I have one protect because they're expensive. It's, it's probably firmware updatable. It says it's hmm. starting at $100, and they've got a link to Amazon. Interesting. Um, so that and then that said, um, other companies on board with Nest Weave include, but are not limited to, Philips Hue, August Smart Locks, Skybell, Lutron, GE, and iHome. And uh, Lutron is one of the big home automation providers mm -hmm. for all sorts of stuff. Whether it be I want to do the locks. Wave, the locks are so expensive, though. They're like two or three hundred <sighs> bucks for a yeah, lock. Yeah. So I I have one, and I got it on clearance at Home Depot, mm -hmm. and I'm not. But that only works with your iris. Uh, it actually technically doesn't work with my iris. Oh, okay. It works with the the other one of the other systems, but there's ways you can sort of hack it in. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, I'm not happy with the quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have it on a board, mm -hmm. but um, uh, the way it is working on the board, and it is the board is a door, so it's right. it's a chunk that I cut out of a door with the door mm -hmm. latch and all the stuff, and it replaces just the dead for bolt, testing, yeah, just for testing, and it sits on a little stand in my office. Mm -hmm. um, for the quality of this thing, I, I wouldn't install this on my door. It's a piece of shit. That's why I did the garage door opener. Because if I, I mean, the use case for the door is I want to let someone in remotely. Right. And I can do that just by opening my right. garage door. Now the scary and that one was cheap. That one was only 75 bucks yeah. in my garage yeah. door. Now and that included the tilt sensor. The scary one for the, the Iris stuff for me is that they have the garage door opener. And I... It's a pain in the ass because you like for me the gr the garage is detached, so mm -hmm. you have to go across the driveway, and the hub is too far away from the the adjacent device to do the mesh. Mm -hmm. So you have to move a device closer to it, which means I need to run an extension cord to the middle of my driveway and mm -hmm. a network cable, so that I can pair it while it's sitting in the driveway, and then it will join the other device. Mm. But it shows up as an unsecured device, as in it doesn't support encryption. Right. So all someone needs to do is to jump into well, that Z -Wave mesh. Well, Z-Wave doesn't have any. I haven't done a ton of analysis on Z-Wave, but there are brand new tools out there for yeah. Z-Wave. I um, mean, because stuff doesn't auto join my smart things. Like I have to no, go into have smart to things stuff. and go find it and stuff. say yes, go add. But uh, Z-Wave has no replay protection. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there that are makes sense. so Josh Josh Wright wrote a tool called mm -hmm. Killer Z. So he wrote oh, Killer B, B for Zigbee. Yeah. He wrote Killer Z for Z-Wave, and mm -hmm. it's like proof of concept, initial type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And using a uh, Don's dongle, Don Weber, Don's yeah. dongle, the, uh, the uh, CC-1100. I'm very the, familiar the, with the, Don's the, dongle. The CC-1111 <laughs> dongle, the RF cat dongle. Mm -hmm. um, you can sniff and replay Z-Wave uh, Z traffic. And in fact, I do that as a demo in 6.17 nice. with, with that tool. That's you guys awesome. aren't selling me on this whole hum automation thing. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's not secure, but it's awesome. It's all, yeah. <laughs> and we're only going to see more of it. Uh, uh, uh. Those blinds, man. You can I can do them remotely. <clears throat> that's and awesome. And now someone broke into my house. Yep. Now, that's I, why I got out of that conversation. Yeah. yeah. And the blinds are closed cuz so you can't see them robbing the place. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but I can do it from my phone. But check this shit out. Watch my wife freak out over the camera. Do you have so, cam Do you have the, any of the Nest cameras? Or? I do not have a Nest camera. I actually just picked up one of the Philips uh, cloud cameras. I did one of the Anchor ones. I'm not really happy with it. Because, uh, and the only reason I got it is because Kristen found it in the clearance section at mm -hmm. Target, and it was like 90% off. Yep. And I found out why when I got home, because it was it as sucks. is. Yeah. No, the Ethernet port doesn't fucking work on it. Oh, but it's, oh, also, but it's <laughs> also But it's also Wi-Fi. Yep. And it will join via WPS. Like, nice. fuck, no. I don't no, want to turn WPS on. WPS. <laughs> WPS. Oh. So I turned WPS on, got it to join. Yep. And then turned WPS back off. There you go. And <laughs> probably just say, there you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, it was one of those. It was like for $12. I couldn't pass up this hundred and something dollar yeah, camera. Yeah, the Anchor one was 100 bucks, yeah. which is still cheaper than the Nest one. Deal. The Nest one didn't work. I couldn't get the Nest one to join my network. Jeez. I was like, I've done this before. And I'm like, I, I can't get it. To like, yeah, I'm not a I'm noob. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, not a noob. So I'm like, screw you. I put it in the box. I'm sending. I returned it, and then I found the anchor one for a hundred bucks. But 
that one does, like it doesn't display the video all the time. It's it's wonky. Yeah, it's, but, you know there there is this effect, right? I'm not a noob, but I do have this habit of way overthinking things. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. There was, I mean, it was, yeah. Like you follow the instructions, and it just doesn't. Work. And yep. like with those devices, there's nothing. Well, I mean, I suppose I could rip it apart and start soldering things to it, but yep. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go find something else. Yeah. Uh, so but, but, so so speaking while we're on this whole IoT thing. Yeah, Windows IoT. That's uh, the other well, one. I had no, another, I had, IoT I had another one. There. I had another IoT story too. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did too. Yeah, it was the four things, I didn't four, read this. four IoT security, cybersecurity issues you never thought about, and <clears> I, I think I've thought about at least three of these. So, who's responsible for patching? Mm-hmm. Uh, we talk about is that. Is it also. possible to have seamless mutual authentication? Mm-hmm. And what happens if the connections between your smart home and your smart grid stop working? Bad things happen. The fourth, <laughs> one, the fourth one I hadn't thought about is, what if the seller of your dream house refuses to give up the keys to the built-in smart devices inside? Mm. So you buy a house and you don't. That's it's like buying a used laptop that has malware on it. It's not your laptop. Right. It's their house. You bought the house, but it's not your house. It's yeah, because a lot of things like. Kevin, just for you, Kevin, your windows that have your blinds in them, right? Like, you can't take those when you leave. Those have to stay. Right. Unless you take the windows out before you... Right. But you, they don't let you do that. And usually. all those nice, fancy light switches that are mm-hmm. all you know, as part of your home control Switches system. and outlets can be built in. and Yep. And light, light bulbs. Like, what would you do? Yeah. Would you take your light bulbs with you? I read a... Or yeah. I read about a year ago, I read a story about a, a very messy divorce, and they had their whole house uh, wired up. And... Um, his revenge was he still controlled the entire heating system, so he would just turn the heat on during the middle of the summer, and this was somewhere in the, the Midwest, so they would just drive the, the AC cost way up, and he would just absolutely terrorize these people by turning the heat on. Eventually, he got caught, luckily, but it, it definitely speaks to that fourth point of, you know, these devices are going to be there. Mm, yep. Called me old-fashioned, but and you will. But I have not adopted these devices into my house right now. I'm, um, I'm just as happy opening my own blinds with my hands. That's yeah, fine. me, me yes. too. Just, just no, as happy see, turning I, I think that's with... so laborious. Like, <laughs> so plebeian. Oh, yeah. You're so like, plebeian. Changing the heat like, by <laughs> actually touching the thermostat is such a foreign concept to me. Oh, yeah. having, to t- <laughs> having to change the heat by getting my op- off my ass off oh, the sofa? Never. Well, even if I'm that sitting, way, it sounds dangerous. Even if I'm sitting like literally three feet from the thermostat, I'll still do it for my phone. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I would argue, I, I, Paul, that you are you, so, so lazy that if you are within touching distance of the thermostat, if the thermostat was on this table and you could reach over and touch it, you'd <laughs> oh, no. grab your phone instead because this is shorter reach. Well, no, you know why? Because I can. Right. <laughs> so the, yeah, this is a this is a kind of a, a perfect example of convenience versus security. Mm, it is, and I'm all for the convenience in this case. <laughs> Well, I don't know why. No, no, no we know. We I do know why. Right I'm lazy. That's why. <laughs> no, we can see right through that, Paul. It's not just that. You like the geek factor. You're like, oh, I like dude. the fact that I can do this. The day I was walking around my yard, turning on and off my sprinklers with my smartphone, and my neighbor's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm turning on and off my sprinklers with my smartphone. He's like, I thought that's what you were doing. He's like, you're awesome. I'm like, I know I am. <laughs> okay. Maybe there that's how the go. conversation went in my head, but really, <laughs> yes. I think it kind of went, Paul, you are a nerd and need to get out more. Yes. <laughs> so, and by the way, I'm yes. not introducing. Yes, I, am. I am not introducing you to my wife with yeah. the big boobs. Yeah. No. Yeah. Hey, check this out. Did she go back? Like, uh, who is that strange? <laughs> Who's our nerd? What is our nerd neighbor doing now? Why is that guy walking through the sprinklers with his phone? Yeah. <laughs> Why did that guy uh, just make an appointment at the Apple Genius Bar? <laughs> oh. Um, so, what was your IoT one, Paul? Oh, Windows 10 IoT. What a hunk Bit, of shit. No, BitLocker. <laughs> I'm actually behind this. BitLocker and Secure Boot on IoT devices is an idea that I'm oh, behind, okay. dude. I'm behind that. All right. You can actually get kits. They're kind of expensive, but Adafruit mm. sells kits for you to start developing Windows 10 IoT-based software uh, from Adafruit. Well, that's that's good because yeah. have, you, have you installed uh, Windows 10 on a Raspberry no. Pi? Exactly. Um, no. Exactly. So you can, and I've seen it. Um, <clears throat> you need a Windows 10 machine to in to build the image to install on um, uh, the SD card for the Raspberry Pi to boot it, and then you boot it up, and you know what you can do with it. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? What? 
Anyone? Crash it. Nothing? Absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> you get a nice display that says, you, Windows IoT, and no- nothing. There's like nothing you can click on. There's wait, 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 Larry. I'm sorry, you, you can, can change it whether it's statically assigned or DHCP IP address. I was going to say, you can do nothing, but it sure looks pretty. Come on. <laughs> I would argue that it doesn't even look pretty. So it, Oh. <laughs> so in this kit, you get uh, the IoT pack for Raspberry Pi 2, which is $115. It mm-hmm. includes a Raspberry Pi 2, mm-hmm. um, a Wi-Fi module mm-hmm. in a case, and an SD card preloaded with Windows 10 oh. IoT Core. Um, it runs core owns hackers and makers. It's not even for large companies. It comes with a couple of sensors that should help users work on different applications. One senses temperature and humidity, and other senses color. I'm not sure how it senses color. It's it's what it's best at it, sensing it blue. It feels blue. It feels blue. It feels blue. It feels, blue. <laughs> it feels purple. Yeah. So I don't. I um, you know what? I think Microsoft does a lot of good things when it comes to security. So I was kind of happy to see them it, offer it in something in the. I, I, space. I think I think I haven't used I think it. So it I, don't know. I think it. it, it I think suck, it will. I think it will develop, uh, and I think that's good. But uh, right you, now, you've all, all got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Please, if you guys are using Windows 10 IoT on something and it's actually productive, other yeah, than I staring, at, staring at a blue screen, please let us know. PSW at securityweekly.com. Are you saying it blue screen? If it blue screens, can oh, it no, sense? Oh no, it's just blue. It's just can blue. it sense that it's blue? And yes. <laughs> yeah. Monitors its own screen and reboots. When yeah. it turns blue, it issues the reboot. Puts, puts, a, puts a fake stack trace up there just for the hell of it. So yeah. D-Link accidentally leaked the private code signing keys. Oh, I mean, God. at this point, no one should really be surprised. Yeah. <sighs> what? Where is where is the credibility? Is there any credibility? Oh, my no. God. <clears throat> Will D-Link suffer financially if they keep making these mistakes, though? Mm-mm. I think not. I think right now, not. But in the future, maybe. I hope. I hope that in the future, a company like D-Link... Can't go on making these huge mistakes in security and still prosper financially as a company that makes devices that do stuff that people want to be secure. I think deep down, certainly people listening to the show want it to be secure. But I, I hope that people will care about the security of these devices to have it impact their purchasing decisions. Yeah, I mean, I see a future 12 step program for former uh, D Link owners. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I also I heard that the, uh, the Google On Hub. That we talked about in a few episodes ago. I think Hack Five did some stuff on it, and I think the overall consensus was that it sucked. That the the wireless connectivity on it sucked, like the range and the throughput, kind of sucked. And there were a lot of other features that just made it feel like very beta ish, um, and it kind of sucked. Well, you know, e- even really arguably good companies that have done some great developments, they still have dog food once in a while. I mean, you that's know, that's true. Yeah. Now, I, I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, we think maybe the future will change some of this and will de- that affect D-Link in the future. Um, my, my suggestion, um, go read Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash. It's, oh, that's a great book. I love uh, that. I, 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 I think I might actually go back and read it again. But, you know, yeah. it's an alternate reality in which, you know, it's in the future. And he wrote it in 1992. And... Boy, is it coming true? <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't spoil it for those of you who haven't read it, but it's like, oh my god! It starts some, out with the pizza delivery guy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's a great book. I, and you look at all the things that happen in this book. It's like all of this could have been fixed with some security, but mm. maybe not so much. Yeah, I, I've got uh, one of his later books right now. I, I don't, I, I don't recall the title right now. I've got it as an ebook, but I, I like his writing style. New, New yeah, Stevens no, which, which, which was the other one? Snow Crash. So Snow Crash is the, the, the one that we were just talking about. Uh, yeah. I, 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 oh, I what just, was the other one? Was it The other one that oh. I've read of his is The Diamond Age. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, have, uh, I have not read uh, Cryptonomicon. That's the which I want Cryptonomicon. To. Yeah. yeah. That's some good. Yeah, if, uh, you know, I, I, I need to I go back have to my, uh, my um, I, I, iPad handy here. Oh, yeah. no, wait a minute. I might be able to come up with the, uh, the one I'm reading right now. While yeah. we're talking about... So, yeah. <coughs> Apple has removed an iPhone app that reports U.S. drone strikes. They also removed today the iFixit app. What was the iFixit The app? iFixit group is a bunch of folks that offer guides on how to repair your own stuff, including mm-hmm. Apple devices. Oh. They also removed... There was some other stuff in here. Um, Katie, Katie Collins reports. 
who looks very cute, by the way. Well, Just thought I'd mention sure that. Want to come, oh, okay. come on the show. Little edification there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, um, it removed apps featuring the kinetic, uh, the Confederate flag, the kinetic flag, the Confederate flag. Mm. Um, they also uh, kind of allude to the 1963 uh, court justice opinion about pornography, uh, and their guidelines say that basically they remove content and they know what they need to remove once they see it. Um, yeah. Damn. Okay, big brother. Yeah. yeah. And that's, well, that's my point. I mean, security is a tricky thing, right? And I see a lot of these big tech companies that take a lot of liberties on their stance about what content is appropriate or not. Some of it's done in the security context. Yep. Some of it's done in the, like, protect the children context or some other context. But, you know, Google, Facebook, Apple, um, I think are the three big offenders to that. I mean, we've been victims of it. Yep. Other shows have been victims of it. Uh, people who make apps like these are victims of it. They're just kind of saying, like, they're basically making the decision on what flies and what doesn't. Yep. Now, 10 years ago, yeah, that wasn't a big deal, right? I don't think it was as big of a deal 10 or 15 years ago. Today... Hey, if you can't get something on YouTube or you can't get an app in the in the iPhone store, like that's a Holy big deal. That, I think they're actually. I would I would make the argument that the ten it was a big deal all the time. I mean, you know, it's ten years ago or not. Um, well, their platform well, is much bigger now, Joff, and they still exert the same amount of control. And I think sure, well, the influence. Yeah, yeah, we fear the the government is doing this for some time, right? But I think it's the big tech companies now that really are dictating what we can produce, um, taking it down based on their own vague rules, opinions, mm -hmm. feelings, and, agendas. And, and you know what? Technically, they and I would argue that they have every right to. It's like when you were kids and you went and played over at Billy's house and Billy said, let's play a game. And Billy changed the rules in the middle of the game because he was losing. Right. Except Billy's now the... Governor or president? Wait, now that's <laughs> Billy, not the case. Billy might have but, been a local, but a Bill, local politician but, back then, or even the owner of his yeah, own house. Yeah. But now these big companies. Yeah. I mean, but so you know, when Billy said, what goes, "Billy man. said you can't do this in my yard," well, right. that's that's YouTube. Yeah. But oh, and I just when remember the, when the governor says you can't do that in Billy's yard. That's a different story. Yeah, uh, but I, I'd argue I, YouTube is the. Where else do you upload your high definition videos? Exa to? I, but, yeah, well, I, I don't. I don't dispute that. But technically, mm -hmm. it's their yard, and they can make the rules. Yeah, it's you, also you don't, a free you don't service. like it. Take your ball. They, and go they home. dictate everything. You are using yeah. their product, so right. You are. Uh, I have to agree with Larry. Well, they, they have every. Yeah, every and you're gonna right side with Larry time. on this one, Kevin. And, and, Damn and, it! I was so <laughs> hoping you'd be on my side. I'm, playing, and, I'm and, like, I'm waiting for Kevin to chime in and back me up on this shit. And I will even just. I'm split here because, and one side, it is their network. It is their. They can do whatever they want. They can set the rules. You agree to follow those rules. On the flip side, I don't agree with that. I, 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 I think I agree it with sucks. your point, Paul, that these these services have become much more or much larger and have much uh, a great benef uh, benefit to society. Mm -hmm. And by restricting content in this manner, it, it actually harms them. But it, it, it's this really kind of interesting catch twenty two, and I, I I don't think anyone has a good answer for it. That's, yeah, I that, don't, that's, I don't that's disagree. The one, it's there. That's it's the there, one thing that I, that I find that uh, I, YouTube may be a little bit too big to fail type of thing, but that the internet abhors a vacuum. And we found this a lot when we were working on some of our geostalking stuff. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Twitter, or some of the Twitter picture sites says no pornography. So, okay, you can't load, upload a picture of boobs to TwitPic. Mm -hmm. But, hey, you know what? I can go create my own website that will encourage you, you to upload pictures of boobs and we'll share that on Twitter. True. You yeah, have to hope yeah. that your hosting provider then allows that. Right. You have to hope that yep. whatever it, credit card... Because you're, you're playing in their yard. Whatever credit card that you're using to pay for such right. services... Because you're playing in their yard. In their yard. You're, you're, playing so. in, you're playing in their house in someone else's yard. <laughs> yeah. 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 So and I, building it, your fort in their house in their yard. I, a lot of these I've seen band together to ban things. like Well, in create rules that are around security, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. improperly... Uh, implemented take down legitimate content. Yep. I mean, pornography I can see protects the children. When we talk about things like tobacco, I've seen it all over the place. I, I can't take out a Facebook ad for things like tobacco. <laughs> right. Certain credit card processors, you can't sell things that are even remotely related to tobacco with the credit card processors. So I think that for me, I'm not so much looking at the government telling me what I can't do. It's all of these providers now of all of these services are greatly limiting and kind of controlling where 
um, yeah. in, in where and what can be said and what can be sold. Freedom is dead. Long of freedom. That's well, true. Freedom still exists, but you just have to physically go outside. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, but if you I mean, master it, you get the arrested. For it. We don't own anything that we do on the internet. Those are all services that we use. So you, you can't say that you have free speech on the internet. We like to think we do, but mm. you actually have to go outside and not use the internet. You can say whatever you want, but Facebook can take your post down. You know, we we conflate these ideals all the time, and it, it's a really kind of hard judgment value we have to make because you think we should be able to say whatever you want. That, that's yeah, the but, whole, but but you still can, right? It's just a matter of how big the megaphone is. Exactly, if you get on John. one of these, lar- if point. you get on one of these large content providers, then you have a big megaphone. <sighs> but they have a big censorship uh, uh, ability. If you put up your own web page, it's your web page. Internet's still free. Your megaphone's tiny, but so what? You know, your host you're, you're out there. No. Your ISP could say no. Your credit card company could say no. Exactly. There, there, there's there, there's so many different levels of service that, granted, will any of those things ever happen? Most mm. likely, no. But most uh, likely not. Um, it still but, uh, can happen. Pay, pay, ca- okay, li- pay cash little, and uh, steal Wi-Fi. I mean. <laughs> little, little side tangent just for a minute. Um, the other Neil Stevenson I'm reading just because, Neil, I like his writing, is called Seven Eves. It's a Kindle book, and I'm loving it. Oh, really? So, yeah. So check that one out, Larry, and uh, anybody else who cares to. Um, Neil, Neil's a, a favorite author of mine. Yeah, I think I downloaded the, uh, the, the Baroque Age um, but haven't w- listened to them yet. But I want to do Cryptonomicon. I think I have that one too. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Anyway, over to you, Paul. I'm just, I'm upset that freedom is dead. Oh, he's he's, <laughs> he's crying in his drink right now. Oh, wait, that was right, empty. Man. My drink's empty. That's another reason I'm crying. <laughs> oh, well, see, that's really your problem. Now, now let's get down to the root of it. I mean, you know. I'm drinking on camera. My ISP is going to ban me because drinking is bad. <laughs> Am I striking a nerve, Kevin? My goal is to strike a nerve with you with this story. No, no. This, this, this is the great kind of conversation we, we have to keep having. because It is. It, it's, if we keep thinking we're, we're free on the internet, then we will keep getting censored the more and more we go. I, I, I just like to um, um, talk to the Apple guys at some point uh, about the topic of drinking and, and on camera and having computing equipment. Um, because <laughs> This is a public it, it service to, announcement. It appears to be dangerous, and I, I need the computer to be more liquid proof. Please. There wasn't a PSA telling me I couldn't do that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. Now you have a legal case. <clears throat> oh no! Everybody. Well, right. that's the security news for this week. <laughs> There's more in the wiki that we didn't get There's to. More in the wiki that we ton. didn't get. Yeah, Especially lots of stories if you're a in the T-Mobile wiki. T-Mobile customer. Yes. Oh. Never a dull moment. Never. Oh, a dull did you moment. put one in there about T-Mobile? Do you want to talk about T-Mobile really quick? I, I put actually four breaches in here. That, uh, that came out this week. Um, That's just, just this before week. the show went live. I a, saw some of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T-Mobile released that they had 15 million records of theirs, including social security numbers, addresses, passport IDs, and license IDs uh, stolen from one of their credit agencies, Experian. So if you are a T-Mobile member, I highly suggest you click that link. Um, Hilton Hotels also potentially had a, a, a breach of many of their hotel properties, according to Krebs. And that's Trump. separate from the Trump Hotel breach? That's yeah, separate from the, ho- the, the Trump Hotel. So the Trump Hotel happened a few months ago, but they mm-hmm. finally confirmed today they did have a, a breach at several of their locations. And then a crowdfunding store, uh, site, Patreon, yeah. had a I've breach. Heard of that oh, really? I, I, I have to say that the most disturbing of all of those is the Experian yeah. Uh, issue because I imagine that rabbit hole is going to get a whole lot deeper before it's yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, we were joking. Well, we were joking. The Go ahead. information that a credit agency has on you mm-hmm. that a social security number to a passport number all gone. That's and, and we were joking about that before, you know, that Experian got breached and one of the things they'll have to do is offer credit monitoring services. Who's gonna offer that credit monitoring service exactly? Experian. They Experian, are. of course. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I mean that, that that story is going to be huge or it's gonna be crushed, I guess. One of the two. Um I suspect huge. Well thank you to Kevin Joff. And, of course, Larry, here in the studio. Very nice. Always a pleasure to talk to security for this week. (coughs) We'll see everyone next week. Thanks for watching, Larry. Over and out.